So, Prykestolen, it's beautiful, it's accessible, yes. and you know what you're going to get. We are on our way to Stavanger from Oslo Airport to discover the most famous hike in Norway, Prykestolen. In this episode on our journey to become Norwegian, we are going to find out if this really is a typical Norwegian hike. Are people prepared? Will we feel in touch with the pristine nature and how much denim is too much denim to wear on a hike? We've just arrived in lovely Sevilla. Just less than an hour away from Oslo here. And it wasn't too bad, it was it? Ah, quite easy. Uh, a little plane, uh, one hour plane. Yeah, they had a little nap. <laughs> that was lovely. As you can see, not so lucky with the weather here, but they got a saying here, the tennis kidali bar, bala dali cloth. So basically means it's no bad weather, just bad clothing. And I'm halfway there, but you can see. <laughs> you told, I know, you told me to wear pants. I didn't wear pants. <laughs> no, I like it. It was literally a couple of minutes ago, it really rained, so it was quite nice. Completely zipped up here, and now I'm going down to shorts. Stavanger is also known for uh, one thing, which is Glalmar Festival, which translates- So Danish. <laughs> I'm trying my best Norwegian, which translates into happy food. Easy, the biggest food festival in Scandinavia. But that's not why we are here. Not at all, we have mu much, much more exciting. Yes, we're doing Prekestorn, which you maybe have seen before. What's it mean? Prekestorn, uh, what is it, Pul pulpit rock? Oh, yeah, it's like the, you know, so in a church there's a pulpit, it's where the priest stands. I guess that's why. <laughs> Honestly, I've never heard the word before, pulpit. But also, one thing about Stavanger, besides you seeing it's quite lovely, one thing we talk about quite much, which funny is dialects in Norway and come to become Norwegian is about understanding dialects. There are I think 20 or 30 different dialects, maybe five to six heavy ones in Norway. Stavanger, there's one which I really like. So when you say not good, you say ikeba, but in Stavanger you say ishebra. Very uh, very fun. Famous. Yeah. <laughs> So here we are at Prykestolen, or the start of Prykestolen at least. We actually decided to take a car in the end. You can take a bus, some people even take a taxi, apparently. Yeah, yeah I thought yeah. as well, God knows how much it would cost, especially in Norway, didn't even want to think about that. <laughs> but, so we hired a car using a car sharing app. Um, contact us, find the car on the app, go ahead, lock, unlock it with your phone, hire for as many hours a day as you want, and just send it back, so super easy. One thing we actually did nearly fall foul of is, as you can see, there are so many people here, that means a lot of cars in the car park. We actually got to the bottom of the, uh, the road and they said the car park was full. We knew there's going to be a lot of people and we've seen the pictures and also the fact that 350,000 people are going to be here. <laughs> when arriving, just getting, uh, the drive was 45 minutes, just yeah. getting closer, just see more and more cars. Yeah. When we got to the first, like, I don't know, security stop something, yeah. they offered us like a parking spot and say, yeah, you can come back at six o'clock. At that point, it was 11 seven hours so we might have had to employ a few sneaky tactics and utilize thomas's sexy danish and some <laughs> of our charming english to persuade the people on the gate to uh, maybe let us through anyway we did the trick so i can't promise that'll work for everyone but uh, we did manage to get ourselves a sneaky little car parking space hike is going to be two hours so it should be fairly easy i know we said that last time and then we took shortcuts but two hours it's total 8k Quite easy terrain. 600 meters is it up over ocean, so 600 meter drop down. Lovely scenery, but I think one important thing that is uh, we're seeing is hiking gear or what you have clothes. Absolutely. I've already seen some people walking in uh, like flip flops. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm the best dressed. No, 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 no. You know, don't we're get me wrong. We're still learning. Absolutely. But I mean, I know one thing: flip flops, jeans, all these things. When you're going up a mountain, is not maybe. I mean, uh, it's a bit of common sense, surely. I didn't have all this gear before, like a year ago, anyways. Yeah. But there's going to be a lovely hike uh, up to it. So uh, crossing fingers that this weather will continue as well.
We are, uh, I don't know, half halfway on, uh, on the little hike. Uh, we met lovely uh, Teshik Lee, is that correct? Yeah. 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 There's a Teshik. Teshik. Yeah. Teshik. I'll try my best. <laughs> Who came all the way from uh, Korea to yeah. do this uh, little hike. Yeah. So you arrive on Wednesday. Today is Friday. Yeah. yeah. And how do you like Norway so far? It was my first time here. Yeah. It was amazing. Amazing? Yeah. And it has, uh, it contains a beautiful nature. Yeah. And uh, good landscape. Yeah. So, As we see here. Is, it, is this was the hike? Plan that you want to do this hike? Yes, right. Yeah. You see. Yeah. My backpack. It's a <laughs> camera inside. <laughs> You're ready to get all the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you see my shoes. Ah, oh, very good hiking yeah. shoes. Yeah. Because yeah. We, we were talking about this earlier as well. That hiking in general, especially like very touristy, uh, mm -hmm. has a lot of people. We've seen people in sandals. We see people in flip flops and everything. Uh -huh. But you are perfectly quitted. <laughs> I try to do it. Yeah, I'm so afraid. <laughs> We've made it. We made it. Made it to the top, as you see. Beautiful, easy hike. A bit slippery due to the weather. Uh, I, think, I think we saw some nuts footwear, sandals, uh, even almost high heels. I think I saw some high heels at one point. No joke, I think I did see some high heels. I'll remember to bring mine next time. Oh, yeah. I'll see that. Yeah. But there's one thing about the reality as well, is that if you zoom around, a lot of, a lot of people. It's an absolutely breathtaking view. You can see quite far, obviously, people take photos. I think there's one thing that is a bit sketchy, which I've heard a lot of Norwegians say is that one thing, obviously, footwear, very important, like bring the right clothes, but also don't push your luck. We've seen people climb up in uh, sneakers, sandals, uh, and that, and then also go very, very close to the edge. 650 meters down, you will not survive. Even you, with your physique and everything you will not yeah, long yeah. you wouldn't survive I mean, one thing I will say is it is a beautiful view as you can see it's absolutely stunning but there are other views like this in Norway that are just as nice or certainly almost as nice and there is no way near as many people as this I don't know what it is about Prague or in particular that has become such a tourist thing I guess it's that kind of snowball effect when people start coming and then more and more people and the word spreads and then before you know it it just kind of blows I, up I do think that because cruise ships are a big part of it we saw it in Stavanger there were uh, two to three big big cruise ships with a lot of they come straight from Germany, uh, but it's very easy, important to the Port Stavanger, and then one hour travel, and then or 45 minutes, you're here, it's an easy hike, yeah. it's not very uh, difficult, like with, when we're going to Lofoten, you have to work a bit more to get some other views, yeah. there's uh, going to be a lot of people as well, absolutely stunning, but this is uh, well, the most touristy hike there is. Stolen, what do you think? Oh, amazing views, but amazing amounts of tourists. Yes, that was different gravy. It really was. I mean, I think I counted about 20 different nationalities and accents, to be honest. American, all over Europe, you know, Asia, which is fantastic. You know? yeah, exactly. It's great to see such a mix of people here. And obviously, yeah. people do flock here from all over the, all over the world. Exactly. But was it a calm hike? Do you feel at one with nature on you? Definitely Easy. not. I mean, if you purely look over in that direction, you try and block out everything yeah. around you and all the people, then maybe, but no, it is hard to really get that true authentic nature experience when there are so many people here. And why, why was that you think there's a lot of Americans here? Well, what we heard, didn't we? Something about a Tom Cruise film, I, I don't know which one it was, Terminator <laughs> 1 or 2 maybe, do I, I, I don't know, I, I don't do films, you know yeah. I don't do films. Yeah. So some Tom Cruise film, he came here once, probably like 30 years ago, yeah. and now every every year since all the Americans have been flocking it. 
And just uh, for people to know as well, Alistair has seen maybe maximum 10 amount of movies and that's why he, he is the movie expert in, in this as well. I think it was Terminator, pretty sure it was Tom, Tom Cruise's stop, Terminator. Stop, Sorry. Yeah. No, no movies. Okay. So to become Norwegian, <laughs> how, how do we get closer to that from uh, this hike? Well, I think that's what we're going to do next. And that is going north. That is going a bit further away from an easy plane hub. And that is going to yeah. be Lofoten. Yeah. It's a bit more remote. It's slightly less accessible. You know, it's further away, maybe a bit more expensive to get there. Indeed. And hopefully that means it might be a little bit more off the beaten track. And don't get me wrong, I think there's still going to be plenty of tourists there. I think it's a different type of tourist though. They've also gone that extra mile to get there. Yeah. Maybe we'll just see all these people up there in jeans. Maybe there'll be just as much denim and high heels in Lofoten. Who knows? Exactly. In it's not really that picturesque, well it is picturesque, but not really that calm hike that you might picture out in the woods that you've probably seen and within I Norway. Yeah, and I think if we're on this mission to become true Norwegians, yeah. we really need to go out there and find you know, what is the true untouched Norwegian beauty. Yeah. Because this is Norwegian beauty, but I don't want to say it's been spoiled by the tourism <laughs> because you know, there's, there's not too much litter around, it's not yeah. dirty, it's not like that, but there are just so many people. There's a lot of denim. You know, there's a lot of flip-flops and I think there is some <laughs> more raw natural beauty out there somewhere. At least we learned not to it. At least I've not got high heels on. Exactly. But I think it's a bit more wild up there. It's a bit more untamed. You can yeah. get a bit more off the beaten track than yeah. this. Which yeah. This hike, which I call a hike on rails. Yeah. It's, like, it's like you're on a roller coaster, basically. And it has a lot of... You're just following the crowds. You know, you're yeah. following the line of people. You can't get lost because you're following a group of people in front of you and exactly. behind you. For some people, that probably works. It's low risk, yeah. it's accessible, it's easy, like we say, but yeah, for the people who really want to get that true Norwegian experience, get out there in the untouched nature, yeah. uh, I think there are better places than that.